apologize. It seems that our air conditioning isn't working this morning. I realize some of you are probably rejoicing because it's not too cold now. Uh, those of us wearing vestments are lamenting a little bit, uh, but it's a great opportunity to remember that mass is not good or bad depending on our temperature or internal state. It's objectively good. We're objectively participating in heavenly worship every time we're here. In my nine years of priesthood, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to say that I've celebrated Mass every single day except for one, excluding Good Friday, which of course Good Friday is technically a service, it's not Mass, although I participated every Good Friday. Uh, there, there's only one day uh, in my nine years of priesthood I didn't celebrate Mass. And on the Saturday prior to this Sunday, I was in Italy, back in Italy as a priest to finish a degree, and had gone with a few priest friends to get some Chinese food and had a, uh, a sesame fried chicken that I thought at the time was poisoned. I, I thought I got food poisoning the next Sunday, uh, the very next day, was just deathly ill. And uh, knowing how terrible socialized healthcare was in Italy, I didn't want to risk going to the hospital, so opted to just suffer in my bed throughout the course of the day. And unfortunately was unable to celebrate Mass, could barely even pray throughout the course of the day. Thanks be to God, I recovered shortly after. A few weeks later, uh, I was actually tested for food allergies and found out I had al allergies to wheat, sesame, and soy, all three of which were in that item, uh, and realized, okay, that, that might explain a little bit why I felt so sick that following day. Unfortunately, that Sunday was Corpus Christi Sunday. <laughs> it was Corpus Christi Sunday, this Sunday that's dedicated to the mystery of our Lord's body and blood, his real presence here, that he gives himself to us to actually feed us, Indeed, this is the imagery that we're given in today's readings in particular, is that we hear reference in today's first reading uh, to what the Israelites experienced as they journeyed through the desert, uh, throughout Exodus, that God fed them daily with this bread from heaven, this manna from on high that would simply appear that Lord would provide enough for them to sustain them as they're journeying in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of this desert. And then Jesus, in today's gospel, makes clear reference to that reality pointing to that, the, the fact that his body and blood is actually the fulfillment of that reality. This is the fulfillment of that image. That is, he desires to sustain us with his very life by giving us his body and blood to eat. He says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you do not have life within you. And anybody that might, might want to suggest that, well, of course, our Lord here is just speaking figuratively. The, the Greek word that he uses here for eat is literally to chew or to gnaw. Uh, this isn't just sort of like receive in a general way or receive in a spiritual way. He's saying, no, you actually have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. That is, the, the, my flesh that I give for you is actually better than the manna from on high, this bread from on high, that your ancestors ate this manna and they still died. But those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will live forever. And as, as the manna sustained the Israelites on their journey through the desert, so our Lord's body and blood is intended to sustain us on our pilgrimage through this life, the desert of this life, to our heavenly homeland, to the promised land. That the Lord desires to feed us and sustain us on this journey. Unfortunately, though, we, we can actually develop food allergies to this reality. Uh, we can actually develop things that prevent us from receiving all that the Lord desires to give. Now, to be very clear, these food allergies that I have don't, don't mean that sesame, wheat, or soy are objectively bad. It's just that simply for me, it, it actually injures me. It hurts me in a way. When we have allergies to the Blessed Sacrament, it's in no way saying that the Blessed Sacrament is bad or that the Lord's trying to punish us, but that we can do things that actually prevent us from receiving all that's present here. And that happens when we commit sin, specifically mortal sin or grave sin. And in order to understand this a little bit, we have to look at some of the sacrifices that took place in the Old Testament. That is, the Israelites would sacrifice animals to God. What was taking place there wasn't just sort of the, the taking of a life, but this sacrifice was meant to be a renewal of their covenantal relationship with the Lord. That is, the sacrifice was an offering to the Lord saying, we renew our commitment that you are our God and we are your people. That we renew this commitment to live in intimate relationship with you, claiming you as our Father and us living as your sons and daughters. 
And then they would actually partake of that sacrifice as a sign of entering into that covenant anew. And in a similar way, when we come to Mass, this is actually what's taking place, is that when we come forward to receive the Blessed Sacrament, as the minister presents the host to us saying, the body of Christ, when we say amen there, we aren't just saying, yes, I believe that this is our Lord, truly present in the Eucharist. We're also renewing our own assent to the covenantal relationship that we're invited into with the Lord. That, that this is actually more than just Jesus giving himself to us. He's actually saying, no, I, I want intimate covenantal relationship with you. That is, I desire to be your God and you will be my people. So when we give our yes there, it's actually a renewal of that commitment, which is why when we commit grave sin, when we commit mortal sin, it's in a way rejecting this covenant. It's sort of throwing it off of ourselves, saying, I'm choosing this other thing over and above the Lord. I'm making this other thing a priority in my life over and above the Lord, which means that in order to be reconciled to the Lord, I actually have to go to confession prior to receiving communion. Because when I approach the table of the Lord in this place where I've put other things before him, as St. Paul says, those who eat and drink the body and blood of our Lord unworthily eat and drink judgment upon themselves. That is, it's like we've developed a food allergy that prevents us from actually receiving the goodness that's present here. Now, the good news, of course, is that unlike my food allergies, which I've prayed for healing a lot of times, unfortunately, the Lord hasn't given it yet, uh, but with this spiritual allergy, the Lord can heal it in an instant. (laughs) As we go to confession, as we receive his mercy and his pardon there, we are offered the guarantee of being reconciled with the Lord, of being drawn back into that covenantal relationship. And then as we approach the table of the Lord, we're able to actually receive all that the Lord desires to give here to receive all of the graces from this bread from on high that he desires to pour forth the wonders of his love upon us. Now I realize for some of us here this morning, we may be saying, Father, this, that's great. You know, th- this makes a lot of sense. Of, of course, I'm aware of this reality. W- what else can we do then? What else can we do to receive all that the Lord desires to give? And one thing that we can be intentional about is just simply our disposition as we approach the altar of the Lord. Uh, sometimes we can look at what, what am I doing prior to the start of Mass? Am I showing up right as Mass is beginning, a little bit distracted, I'm thinking about work or other things going on at home, rather than taking a few minutes just simply to, to quiet my heart and prepare myself to enter in and receive our Lord, to give myself here and to actually receive back the very gift of our Lord's love. Similarly, what am I doing after Mass? Do I have things planned that I need to scoot out right after communion. Uh, I like to tease a little bit about that. that There's somebody else, actually one of the apostles himself, that left right after communion at the very first mass. His name was Judas. (laughs) That is, if we have things planned after mass that we need to shoot out after communion, we're actually kidding ourselves. It's a sign that we don't recognize that the presence that we've just received, the incredible gift that we've just received. And really, it's about our disposition. As we're present here at Mass, it doesn't actually matter what we feel like. Not to say our emotions don't matter ever, but our emotions here don't actually matter because our Lord is objectively present here. This is objectively the high point of your day. That this is the moment that you will be closest to the life of heaven. I was so grateful for one of the priests in seminary emphasizing this for us, because I don't know about you, but at times for me, I can get a little bit distracted during Mass. I can be thinking about what what am I having for breakfast later today? What am I doing later this evening? What am I going to have for dinner? Often it's thinking about food. Uh, but, But as we get distracted, we're actually invited to recognize that this is the very high point of our day, that this is the most important thing you will do today, is entering into this heavenly worship. And that unlike the Israelites who offered these external sacrifices of of lambs and goats and cows, we're actually entering into the sacrifice, the offering of the only begotten Son of God presenting himself to the Father on our behalf. That we, we participate in the literal redemption of the world every time we come and participate at Mass.
This is why I was so grateful for that priest at seminary to emphasize that so that at our early morning mass at 6 a.m., often during the course of the week, as you're a little tired and distracted, struggling to stay awake, I, I, by the grace of God, could choose to be present there. Lord, help me to believe. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Help me to be present here. Help me to enter in and, and to give myself to you here. Lord, I believe that as I enter in here, you are truly present regardless of what I'm feeling, regardless of how tired I am, regardless of how hungry I am. Lord, I believe that you are really and truly present here. And Lord, as I encounter you, let me receive all that you have, all that you are. Again, if we see this as the renewal of that covenantal relationship, that the way that we can really prepare our hearts, especially as we're coming forward to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, is just simply to renew the surrender, the gift of ourselves to him. Uh, Lord, here I am once again. Lord, I give myself completely to you. Lord, I surrender my heart completely to you. I open myself to receive all that you have, all that you are. And indeed, as we open ourselves, as we renew this gift of ourselves to the Lord, we are assured the promise that he desires to sustain us. He desires to give us his very life, his very love, present in his body and blood.